Hello, my name is Emily and I'm a PhD student at the University of Leeds. This short presentation is about a study I conducted at the start of my PhD, which is funded by the Yorkshire and Humber Patient Safety Translational Research Centre. The study involved interviews exploring emergency department doctors' tolerance of uncertainty surrounding admission and discharge decisions. I'm going to focus on a few of my key findings, but if you would prefer to see them in more detail, you can access written summaries on the website page. So to start with, I'll discuss what is meant by the term uncertainty tolerance. Uncertainty tolerance is a concept describing an individual's response to uncertainty and is becoming increasingly popular in the healthcare literature. The most comprehensive model of uncertainty tolerance in healthcare was developed in 2017 by Hillen and colleagues. The model is concerned with consciously perceived uncertainty, so the experience of uncertainty gives rise to thoughts, feelings and behaviours, which the model suggests are influenced by moderators. This is important to look at amongst doctors because research has linked these negative manifestations of uncertainty to consequences like burnout amongst physicians and less transparent encounters with patients. Often doctors with a low uncertainty tolerance will over-admit and conduct excessive testing in the face of uncertainty due to fear of missing something. My PhD focuses on this concept in the emergency department because doctors here are required to make decisions about complex patients, often with insufficient information and unpredictable patient outcomes. So the first study of my PhD explored this concept by interviewing 14 emergency department doctors. But well, consultants were excluded because existing research suggests they tend to show a higher uncertainty tolerance, so may not require the support more junior staff do. I explored their experiences of uncertain decision-making through the lens of this model. So my findings can be considered in two, two sections. So there are categories presented around the components of the Hill and model you've just seen, which are those in Navy. If you would like more details on these findings, you can access a summary document on the website page where you found this video. There's also one overarching theme which represents the perceptions of how uncertainty tolerance develops with clinical experience, and I will discuss this in detail. Well, first, I'm going to go through a diagram which reflects my findings specific to admission and discharge decisions. So firstly, doctors discussed using source-focused behavioural responses to reduce uncertainty if they didn't know what decision to make. So source-focused responses had the intention of reducing uncertainty, and depending on the individual doctor, these often reduced uncertainty to a tolerable level and patients were discharged. So these are the typical kind of uncertainty management things we would think of, like eliciting medical history, checking test results, and asking seniors for help. There were factors which made this more or less feasible. So for example, if the patient didn't have capacity, patient preference couldn't be used as a source of information. Or if the department was really busy, it was harder to seek enough information. What was pivotal here in deciding admission or discharge was whether these strategies allowed a serious diagnosis to be ruled out. For the inevitable uncertainty that still existed here, consequence focus responses were then used. So these are behaviours which don't reduce the uncertainty present, but they mitigate the consequences of it. And these included things like safety netting and communicating uncertainty to patients and families. Again, factors influence the ability to use these strategies. So for example, at night time, arranging safe discharges with adequate safety netting was harder for older patients with no family in the house. And the consequences couldn't be mitigated like they would be at daytime when the patient's carers were scheduled to visit, for example. After this was where individual differences really came into play. So junior doctors often discussed admitting patients even when serious diagnoses had been ruled out because they couldn't engage in consequence focused responses as well as seniors. And if they did, they often still didn't reduce the negative thoughts and feelings about the uncertainty, such as worry and overestimating worst case scenarios. Overarching all of this was the acknowledgement and acceptance of uncertainty. So how much doctors were aware of the limits of their knowledge and how much they accepted that uncertainty doesn't necessarily need to be abolished. So this depended on clinical experience, which influenced the need and ability to use certain strategies. And this is what my overarching theme summarizes. So the theme is titled Uncertainty Tolerance as an Evolving Work Trait, and it's made up of five sub-themes. So the first sub-theme, um, which is the one at the bottom of the arrow there, titled Learning on the Job, refers to the perception amongst doctors 
that medical training promotes information seeking as a quest for certainty without acknowledging the irreducible uncertainty often faced in emergency departments. So because of this, junior doctors perceive themselves to be unequipped with the skills and strategies to manage uncertainty effectively in their early years of practice. The second sub-theme in the middle of the arrow there refers to a developing acceptance that uncertainty is often irreducible and the focus of practice becomes less about eliminating uncertainty and more about considering which risks are appropriate to take. This is highly relevant to emergency medicine where the treatment of a suspected condition may not take the textbook approach, but the most important thing to treat or rule out is the focus. The third sub-theme, which is the one at the top of the arrow, captures the perception that with experience, comes increased confidence in using uncertainty management strategies. In particular, stronger relationships with, with the team can help promote psychological safety. And as a result, doctors are more willing to ask for help. More experienced doctors also discuss placing more trust in patients to return to hospital if they needed to, casting safety nets wider. The next sub theme titled a cycle of uncertainty tolerance highlights something that previous research hasn't. So despite a general increase in tolerance, Doctors drew, also drew on occasions where they temporarily became more risk averse. So this included the time period following an adverse event, when rotating to a new hospital, or returning to the ED after spending a year of training in anaesthetics and ICU. This also happened when they had an increase in responsibility, particularly when becoming a senior decision maker. Finally, doctors discussed experiencing uncertainty differently as their career progressed, not only because they were better at managing it, but also because they just experienced less of it. Because they'd seen more patients and received feedback on decisions, even though this is limited and usually in the form of test results or senior advice confirming or opposing their judgments, they were better at recognizing patterns because of this. After being exposed to more patients and less adverse events, they got more confident in their clinical judgment and trusted their gut more. This meant that less information needed to guide a decision because gut instinct was often enough to base these decisions on. So before I finish, I just wanted to quickly discuss the three main practical implications of my findings. So the first is that to enhance uncertainty tolerance amongst junior doctors, we can learn from how senior doctors feel like theirs has developed. So this means that opportunities senior doctors have had to develop confidence in managing uncertainty need to be more readily available. So this could include getting more feedback on decisions, particularly decisions to discharge patients. So if doctors had the knowledge that discharge decisions didn't pose patient safety risks, this could enhance uncertainty tolerance when discharging future patients. The second implication is that for doctors of all grades to effectively manage uncertainty, the work environment should facilitate the behaviours which reduce those negative thoughts and feelings associated with a discharge decision. So this means the factors which are inhibiting successful uncertainty management, such as a lack of safety netting structures at night time, require attention. And finally, a need for clinical education to place greater and more direct emphasis on addressing uncertainty was made clear. As well as providing clinical knowledge which reduces uncertainty in practice, doctors would benefit from learning how to manage situations in which clinical knowledge is just not enough to eliminate the uncertainty. So going forward, the findings from my PhD studies so far are going to inform the development of an uncertainty management intervention for emergency department doctors and patients. I would like to thank all the doctors who took part in this study and also those who helped me design it and refine my findings. If you want to know more about this study or provide any comments, please contact me using the email or Twitter tag on screen. Thank you very much.